hi everyone welcome to the noisa national five days workshop this is the basic introduction to arduino uh, programming wiring and more hi i'm joseph we are from fale so this uh, workshop is under the leadership of dauda monsuru alatunji popularly known as NMIS, the Noisa National President. So, um, this is the, the flyer for the event, for the workshop. About the tutor, um, like I said the other time, I'm Joseph Ulua from Fale. I'm a student, student um, of Ladoki Akintala University of Technology, Ibuma Shop, Nigeria. Computer engineering, so my course of study. I can see that my course of study is computer engineering, and I possess some skills in web programming, software programming, and um, hardware programming, majorly with Arduino. Um, I can use some programming language like Arduino, C, JavaScript, and Python. Um, also, uh, you, you, wanna, uh, you want to um, talk to me or you want to um, see some of the job I've done, you can um, go to my Twitter account at jovitz underscore solution or you go to my Facebook page, visit my Facebook page Jofuit Solution or uh, on Instagram if you want to check me on Instagram Jofuit underscore solution on Instagram and then um, if you want to contact me you want to send a mail to me visit uh, you can make use of uh, Jofuit Solution at gmail.com that is that about me so let's move on to the next thing The goal of this lesson, yeah, introduction, aim and objectives, scope of study, the expected results. The introduction is where I'm going to introduce you to what Arduino is all about. Um, you gotta know what you can use Arduino for. Um, uh, everything about Arduino, I'm gonna tell you. Or you can go home, go to Google, Google search Arduino. You want to know more about Arduino but I'm gonna tell you um, some of the things you need to know about Arduino so the hymn and objectives uh, the hymn of this um, of this workshop of this lesson is just to familiarize you with what we know as Arduino I just want to familiarize you with Arduino so the scope of study uh, our scope is going to be, um, I'm just going to explain some basic projects in Arduino, some basic topic, just going to talk about it and then we'll do some kind of practical stuff. So that is all about the scope. The expected results, at the end of this lesson, I would uh, expect you to have been able to write an Arduino sketch. Write Arduino sketch, upload it to your Arduino board, and then so it's going to perform the specified task. That is what you write. It depends on what you write. Depends on the code you write. Then it's going to perform the task. So that is all about this one. Let's go on to the next slide. What is embedded system? Now this is the introduction stage. You must have been hearing about embedded system up and down, embedded system, this embedded, 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 that. Now let's talk about what embedded system is. An embedded system is a combination of computer hardware. You know computer hardware, they are the physical components of the computer system. We are not only talking about computer, but we're talking about hardware generally and software. So, and perhaps additional parts, either mechanical or electronic, designed to perform a dedicated function. So, 
So a good example is the microwave oven. Almost every household has one and tens of millions of them are used every day but very few people realize that a computer, processor and software are involved in the preparation of their lunch or dinner. I know some of you, you guys, you have been making use of microwave at home. You don't know what, how microwave works, you don't know what's inside. A microwave is built around the microcontroller. So, mostly every device built around microcontroller, they are embedded system. So, they are embedded system. For example, like a remote controlled bulb, a remote controlled fan, a remote control TV. There is a microcontroller in the circuitry of such a device that allow it to be working. So that is an embedded system. You will see, um, for example, the brain box of a car. There is a microcontroller there. So there are so many applications. Almost all the appliances, almost some of the appliances, let's say some, some of the appliances you use at home, the electrical appliances, some of them, they are embedded system because they make use of microcontroller. So let's move on to the next slide. So that is that about embedded system. You can go to Google to learn more about embedded system. Embedded developer. Who is an embedded developer? What is the function of an embedded developer? What should an embed embedded developer know? Now, an embedded developer must possess hardware knowledge and efficient coding. Number one, the embedded software developer must become intimately familiar with the integrated circuit, the boards and buses and the attached devices used in order to write solid embedded software, also called firmware. Embedded developers shouldn't be afraid to dive into the schematics, grab an oscilloscope probe and start poking around the circuit to find out what is going on. As an embedded developer, you should understand what software is. You should know hardware very well. When, I, when I'm talking about hardware, I'm talking about the basic electronic component. Generally, you must know what a resistor, how a resistor can work, how a capacitor, how an inductor, how a light emitting diode work. You must know your operational amplifier. You must know about electronics as an embedded developer. You must have a basics. You, have, you must have the basic knowledge of electronics and hardware. So an embedded developer must be efficient in coding. And when we talk about coding, we mean programming. The ability to write efficient code is a great quality to possess as a firmware developer. So you must be able, um, you must be good in a particular programming language. Let's say, for example, um, if you are an embedded developer, you must be good in C++. You must be good in some languages like C language, Python or any other language used in programming hardware. So that is that about that one. You can go to Google and learn more. Yeah, let's go. So this is the, uh, the major topic, the major discussion, how major discussion. What is Arduino? What is Arduino? Now, according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia states, an Arduino is a single board microcontroller and a software suit for programming heat. The hardware consists of a simple open hardware design for the controller with an Hartmel heavy hard processor and the board I hold support. The software consists of a standard programming language and a bootloader that runs on the board. In layman's terms, an Arduino is a tiny computer that you can program to process input and output between the device and the external component you connect to it. So Arduino is known as a physical or embedded computing platform, which means that it is 
an interactive system that can interact with its environment through the use of hardware and software for example a simple use of, a, of an Arduino would be to turn a light on for a set period of time let's say 30 seconds after a button has been pressed so Arduino is an hardware programming platform you get let's say for example you want to um, uh, you want to automate your home you want to control your ball without standing up going to the wall switch you want to sit down you want to sleep comfortably in your bed and then control your TV you want to control your bulb you want to control your fan or you want okay for example when someone wants to enter your room you want to know that someone is at your door so Arduino can help you do that you can program it so you can talk to it so you can tell Arduino to do whatever you want and it's gonna do it so that's what Arduino can do for you you can go on to Google to search to read more about Arduino there are a lot of information out there concerning Arduino the Arduino board so let me show you I want to just I want you to see clearly um, the physical Arduino board I wanted to see it clearly as you can see this is an Arduino board this is exactly the one that you're seeing on the screen so I just wanted to see it physically so this is an Arduino board Arduino Uno a typical Arduino board so let's move on to the next slide the Arduino board the Arduino board is made up of an Hartmel AVR microprocessor a crystal or oxidator a crude clock that sends time pulses at a specified frequency to enable it to operate at the correct speed and a 5 volt linear regulator depending on what type of Arduino you have it may also have a USB socket to a PC or Mac for uploading or retrieving data the board exposes the microcontroller's I.O. which is the input output pin so that you can connect those pins to other circuits or to sensors so the Arduino board um, has a lot of functions there are a lot of functionality on the board so on the board there is an uh, an heavy hard microcontroller and there is a crystal oxidator which provide clock signal clock pulse uh, to the microcontroller so uh, if you want to connect the board to your PC there is a um, USB cable a USB socket on the board then you attach your USB cable to it then you plug it to your system with that you can communicate so that will allow communication between your system and your Arduino board so and there are a lot of um, um, there are a lot of space for you to con for you to connect inputs um, input device and then output device if you want to control you want the sensor you want to make use of a sensor so you can connect it to the Arduino board and then if you want to um, you want to turn on a lighting point you can connect it to the Arduino board and then you're gonna do whatever you want yeah we're talking about Arduino 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 there is something built there is something the Arduino is built around which is called a microcontroller so let me tell you what a microcontroller is a microcontroller MCU for microcontroller unit is a small computer on a single metal oxide semiconductor MOS integrated circuit chip the microcontroller contains one or more CPUs processor cores along with memory and programmable input output peripherals microcontrollers are designed for embedded applications 
In contrast to the microprocessors used in personal computers or other general purpose applications, consisting of various discrete chips. Now, you, you, may, you might have been hearing what is called microcontroller. As you can see, the picture of a microcontroller. So this is it. Uh, the microcontroller is embedded on, the, on this Arduino board. So they call it um, dual inline package because it has pins on both sides. So, and then you can plug it to your board and then you can remove it. It is removable. So a microcontroller, um, you can program a microcontroller, you can control it, you can tell the microcontroller, okay, I want to, um, I want to build a device I, that if I, I want to be the uh, a timer cooker okay that okay if I set the time okay I want to cook rice let's say normally if you want to cook rice you can cook rice within um, 20 minutes let's say 20 minutes maximum the rice will be done then you place your rice on your cooker then you put 20 minutes okay after 20 minutes I want um, the cooker to go off then you set it what can allow you to do something like that is what is called a microcontroller so you program your microcontroller according to the way you want it to work you know when we talk about um uh what we all call the programming we say programming is a set of instructions waiting to perform a specific task so you program your microcontroller in order to perform the task you want so microcontroller can only perform a specific task unlike a microprocessor i know you will have been hearing what is called a microprocessor which is used in computer your uh, it is used in computer tablet and so on so microcontroller is different from microprocessor please don't um don't put it uh, don't I misunderstand are you getting me microcontroller and microprocessor they are different so microcontroller is a complete computer on a single silicon chip so the microcontroller has um, memory units input output units and then it has a processor in it but a microprocessor it is the brain of the computer. It is the central processing unit of the computer. The, 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 the microprocessor can perform so many tasks. It can do many things. So it has been pre-designed. It has been designed by the manufacturer to do so many things. So you can use it as a calculator at the same time, use it to read something at the same time, play game on it at the same time, do this, do that. So it can perform so many things. So it's very um, complicated. So let's. I believe you have a, um, you have little knowledge about what microcontroller is. So let, let's move on to the next slide, please. Yeah. Arduino programming. I know you you must have been hearing the word programming before. Now, programming is not new to you. Um, most especially once you uh, once you leave um, your high school maybe once you leave secondary school as we call it in Nigeria so now to program the Arduino that is in order to make it do what you want it to do you use the Arduino IDE which is the integrated development environment so the IDE is a piece of free software in which you write code in the language that the Arduino understands a language called C language in order to program in order to do not even only, uh, only Arduino, other programming languages, let's say Python, you will need an interface where you input your code, then you run it. So that's what they call integrated development environment. That is where you input your code, there's a compiler, and then it compiles your code, then you see your result. So there's an ID to program. In Arduino, you cannot just use any ID. So the ID lets you write to a computer program, which is a set of step-by-step -step instructions that you then upload to the Arduino board. Your Arduino will then carry out these instructions and interact 
with whatever you have connected to it in the Arduino world programs are known and are known as sketches in the Arduino world when you write a program we call it sketch so your sketch because at times you might you may hear someone saying oh um, let me see your sketch you know don't feel like oh, what was this what is one talking about what is sketch no 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 sketch is the same thing as um, your program in Arduino so so you write your code on the Arduino ID then you upload it to your board but you must have connect the USB cable to the, um, to the to your computer and then your computer on your computer you must have installed the Arduino ID so the programming language used to program the Arduino is Arduino C language so it is a modified C language. There is a C programming language. So the C language is modified in order to work with the Arduino. So that is that about that one. Let's move on to the next slide. Open source. The Arduino is open source. The Arduino hardware and software are both open source, which means that the code, schematics, design, etc can be taken freely by anyone to do what they like with them. Hence, there are many clone boards and other Arduino based boards available to purchase or to make from a schematic. Indeed, there is nothing stopping you from purchasing the appropriate component and making your own Arduino on a breadboard or on your own homemade PCB printed circuit board. So, the Arduino is open source. You can go to the internet, you see a lot of Arduino codes. You see a lot of Arduino projects. It is free. You can just copy it. You can do it. You can modify it the way you want. So, which make it very much easier to use. So, Arduino is very, very easy because there are a lot of professionals that have done so many projects on Arduino. So, you can just make use of their work. Then you edit it or you modify it in order to suit your own application. So, um, that is all about that one. The only caveat that the Arduino team imposes is that you cannot use the word Arduino. There is only one thing that you must avoid in everything you do on Arduino. If you want to make your own board, you can't use the word Arduino on your board. You can't put Arduino on your board because it is a... Um, the name um, belongs to the company, to the only company that um, manufactures Arduino, the founder of the Arduino. So you can't make use of Arduino, you can't put Arduino on your board, okay? I built my own Arduino board now and I put Arduino. No, 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 no. If I will do that, I have my own name. I'm Joseph, I'm Ulua Femi. So I can name my own Femino. So there are so many boards out there. You see um, a Arduino, you see uh, Arduino Leonardo, you see um, Arduino Nano, Arduino Micro, Ardu uh, Arduinos, you see so many. So I will just name it whatever name I know it suits me. So this name is reserved for the official board. So the Arduino is reserved only for the official Arduino board. Hence the clone boards have names such as Free Duino, Robo Duino, etc. So you can just do this, um, make use of something like that. Extending Arduino. One of the uh, the things that make Arduino um, very interesting is that you can extend Arduino. What I mean by extend is that you can plug in um, external modules to the Arduino. The Arduino can also be extended with the use of sheets, which are circuit boards containing other devices, e.g., GPS receivers, LCD displays, Ethernet modules, GSM modules, Bluetooth modules, etc., that you can simply connect to the top of your Arduino to get extra functionality. Sheets also extend the pins to the top of its own circuit board, so you still have access to all of them. So you don't have to use a sheet if you don't want to. You can make the exact same circuitry using a breadboard 
stream board, the Vero board, or by making your own PCB. So the Arduino board, you can go on to Amazon, go on to um, Freetronics, go to uh, Adafruit, you can get your own, uh, you can get your uh, a GPS module and LCD display and Ethernet modules, then you attach it to your Arduino. Maybe for example in your project you want to um, you want to show some kind of uh, text. You can mix it over an LCD display and you connect it to your Arduino. Or you want to um, design a car tracker. So you know it's something like that, or you want to track something, you need a GPS module. So you can buy a GPS module, then connect it to your Arduino, or you want to um, use some kind of SMS calling your project on your design. You can get a GSM mode, then you connect it to your Arduino. So Arduino is very, very, very interesting. So that's one of the uh, one of the things or some of the things that make Arduino very interesting. And you can make use of breadboard with the Arduino. You know a breadboard. Um, this is an example of a breadboard. This is what we call breadboard. And then also Vero board. Um, and you can design your own PCB like this. You're seeing here. This is a printer circuit board made by me. So you can design your own PCB. Types of Arduino board. Now, I want to talk about the Arduino board. There are several different types of the Arduino board. We have several different types. So, um, we have the Arduino Uno. We have the Arduino Nano. We have the Arduino Mega. We have the Arduino Micro. And we also have the Arduino Explorer. We also have the Lilypad Arduino board. And we also have the Arduino Leonardo board. So there are so many. There are so many. And but in this lesson, we'll be making use of the first one, which is the Arduino Uno. The Arduino Uno um, is the um, the most popularly used Arduino board. Is the most popularly used Arduino board. So we will be making use of the Arduino Uno in our lesson. So you can go to Google to you can go search Arduino Nano, Arduino Mega in order to know more about other Arduino boards. So you know the choice of uh, microcontroller is the uh, the choice of microcontroller depends on your application. If what you want to do in your project, maybe you want to do something like you want to store a lot of data in your project, you'll not be going for Arduino Uno because the memory is not enough. The Arduino Uno has one kilobyte, um, one kilobyte ED prom, electronically erasable programmable read only memory. So you want to check for another um, microcontroller. So like the, this Arduino Uno, it is having a microcontroller on it, which is the Art Mega 328 microcontroller, which we are still going to talk about. So um, the Arduino Mega, on the Arduino Mega, there is a microcontroller on it, which is Art Mega 2560. So the Art Mega 2560 offers a lot of advantage when it gets to um, program memory, when it gets to EEPROM, when it gets to um, when it gets to number of pins. So it offers a lot of advantage. So the choice of microcontroller or the choice of Arduino board depends on your application. So why is that about that one? So the Arduino Uno, as you can see, oh, let me, okay, first let's, okay, the Arduino Uno is a huge option for your initial Arduino, that is, um, if you want to get started with Arduino, it will be ideal you start with the Arduino Uno, because a lot of people have the, um, as a learner, first time your first time with Arduino um, it will be 
pretty much good. You start with Arduino Uno. As you know, you're going to see a lot of projects online on the Arduino Uno. So it will be very nice if you start with the Arduino. So this Arduino board, that is the Arduino Uno board, depends on an Hatmega 328P um, microcontroller. So the board is based on Atmega 328P microcontroller, which we are still going to talk about. So as compared with other types of Arduino board, it is very simple to use, like the Arduino Mega type board. So the Arduino Uno board is very, very simple to use. All you just need to is um, have the basic understanding of um, electronics and then um, you need to know a little programming but as times come you learn more so you read to know so it consists of 14 digital input output pins that is you know we have um, on, on your head the word um, digital you know we have um, data in different form we have analog data we have digital data so now when we talk about a situation where we have um, zeros and ones on or off high or low or you want to read something that we that we only give you two condition this either it is 10 or it is zero this either it is um, five or it is ten or you want to read a voltage uh, no, 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 don't let us talk about voltage. When we talk about digital inputs, maybe you want to um, make use of a PIR sensor, a passive infrared receiver sensor in your circuit. So you connect it to a digital pin so, so that um, once it gives you a high or a low, you want to do something in your project or your, you want to do something in your code. So. Um, it has um, digital inputs, I mean digital input outputs. So all you want to control an LED, you want to give it give an LED um, five volts, or you want to um, you want to apply a high voltage to a particular motor. So so that's the that is about that one. So six pins can be used as PWM out of the 14 digital pins, six of them can be used as PWM, that is pulse width modulation. So the pulse width modulation, PWM is a technique um, using um, determining how much um, load, how much power is being de is being delivered to a load. That is, you want to you want to you want to control a motor, then you don't want five volts to get to the motor. Or you 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 want to con you want you want to you want to send you want to apply a voltage between 2.5 to 5 volts across a motor. You get you know depending on the um, the 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 amount of volt voltage you apply to the motor. So that will determine the uh, the speed of rotation. That is the revolution. So now you apply a voltage from. So you can make use of what we call PWM, which is a in form of a duty cycle. You get so you can apply 3 volts. You can apply um, you can choose to apply 3.2, point up to something between 2.5 to 5 volts. So you can do something like that, making use of a pulse width modulation. So it does six analog inputs. So when we talk about analog inputs. Analog input, you know, let's um, take a look at the uh, physical condition of our environment. For example, your environment, you know, we can say, okay, let's measure the level of um, brightness or the level of um, darkness. You know, that's analog in nature. So it has to be a, 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 a particular value, a particular value, that will be a particular value. So, for example, you want to use a temperature sensor in your project. So that kind of um, that kind of uh, component or that kind of device, you connect it to an analog input because it is physical in nature. A temperature is going to be a value. The 
For example, normal room temperature is around 27 degrees Celsius. So now something like that, you connect it to an analog pin on the Arduino board. So that's the um, the essence of the analog input. So um, a reset button. So on the board, there is also a reset button on the board. There is a reset button on the Arduino board. So on the Arduino board, there is a reset button. As you can see here, this is the reset button. That is, when you press this reset button, it will restart. Whatever code or whatever, um, let's say code or whatever um, uh, task that the, um, the microcontroller is doing, it will start from the beginning. It will restart the whole system. The whole microcontroller will restart when you press this reset button. So that's the function of the button. So on this side, we have the sys analog input. Which is from which is, which is labeled on the board from A0 to A5. A0 to A5. Maybe when you get your Arduino board, you will see it clearly. Um, so, another thing is um, the digital pins that I talk about the other time. So, this from um, pin 0 to 13 on the board. So, it is labeled on the board from 0 to 13. So, that's the uh, the digital pins so there is a uh, ground there is uh, 5 volts on the board there is a um, V in there is 3.3 volts on the board so there are a lot of features on the board so there are a lot of things we have the the, the, the high CSP so um, there is a USB USB connector so a power jack that is where you can connect power to on the board if you want to connect power to the board so there's a jack input in the board and then there's a this is the crystal oscillator is the crystal oscillator so and some other some other stuffs like led light emitting diode and indicator light that will, so once you plug the the board to, to your system or to your pc so it's gonna the light will come on to indicate that there's power that's power has get to the board so it includes everything required to hold up the microcontroller simply attach it to a pc with the help of a usb cable and give the supply to get started with an ac to dc adapter or battery you can also make use of battery so for example let's say you have already uploaded you have uploaded your code to the board and then you don't want to supply you don't want to, you don't want your pc to supply power to the board you want a different source so you can make use of a 9 volt battery then you connect it to this jack input so the board will come on so um so there are a lot of functionalities on the board so we have an analog reference uh, voltage so, so we have 3.3 volts we have the reset there's a pin for the reset maybe this is no more if this is no longer working so we can make use of that one and then what other things and we have a, and we have an led which indicates transmit and receive on the board that is when you are transmitting data from the board and then so the LED will come on when you are receiving data the LED will come on so let's move to the next slide so let's talk about the Atmega the AT Mega 328 microcontroller the 80 mega 32 microcontroller so
with 80 mega 328 microcontroller. So a, uh, a brief um, description of the microcontroller. So this is the microcontroller. I want you to see it clearly so that So there are a lot of there are several different types of uh, microcontroller out there. So like I said the other time, the choice of your um, of your your um, the the choice of microcontroller depends on the application. It depends on the application in a situation whereby you want to. Um, control a lot of things in your project and you want to accept a lot of inputs so you want to go for a kind of microcontroller that has a lot of pins a lot of um, input output pins so for example the Atmega 328 microcontroller which is um, which is plugged or which is connected to the Arduino Uno board so it has 28 pins it has a total of 28 pins and then the the pin 1 is the reset pin, so the pin 2 is a digital pin and it can also be used as a receive pin, that is when you want to um, communicate with another device, let's say for example a Bluetooth module, so you can connect it, you can connect a Bluetooth module to the, uh, the, to, the, um, to, the, to the second pin, which is the pin 2. Of the microcontroller, so we also have the transmit, which can also which you can also connect to that Bluetooth module because in order to transmit and receive data between the two between the microcontroller and then the uh, the Bluetooth module or any other device that supports transmit and receive. So the number three, the number four, the fourth pin, the pin four, is also a digital pin, which is digital pin two. So um, we also have the pin 5 on the microcontroller. It's also a digital pin, which is uh, also a PWM pin. So the next one, which is the pin 6, is a digital pin. So the next one is um, number 7, the pin number 7 on the microcontroller, which is the VCC, where you connect your um, your 5 volts to. So the the Atmega 328 pin microcontroller supports. 5 volts, the voltage between 1.8 to 5.5 volts should be applied to the maximum of 5.5 volts. It must not be more than it should not be more than 5.5 volts. So a voltage beyond 5.5 could damage the microcontroller. So that means you you once once the microcontroller got burnt, so you need to get another one. So so there are a lot of um, engineers out there who they fry components a lot. So once you apply the voltage beyond 5.5 volt, you fry the microcontroller. So you need to get another one. So, so that means you have to be very careful when using it. So the pin number eight, you connect your ground to it. So the pin and the, the next one, which is the um, pin nine, is where pin nine and ten is where you connect your crystal oscillator. So all these description, you know, when you want to use the microcontroller, you want to build your own circuit. That is, you don't want to uh, make use of this complete Arduino board in your project. You want to build your own Arduino circuit around your project. Then you need to um, you, need, you need to uh, get a crystal oscillator and the capacitor then you connect it um connect it across the in 9 and 10 of the microcontroller which will provide a clock signal 
for the microcontroller. The crystal oscillator is always um, 16 megahertz, so you can make use of a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. So the next pin, which is the pin 11, is a digital pin, and then it can also be used as PWM, that is pulse width modulation. So the next one, which is the pin 12, is also a digital pin, and it can also be used as a PWM pulse width modulation. So the next one, which is the pin 13, is a digital pin. Pin 14 is a digital pin. So. Uh, and they can also be, they also have some other functions. Some of the pins can be used as an interrupt pin, so it has been, it has been designed on them. So the pin 15 is a digital pin and a PWM. Pin 16 is a digital pin, PWM. So it's all, it's written on it. Pin 18, pin 19, they are digital pins, pin 20. You connect um, analog. Uh, uh, you connect uh, VCC. You, know, you connect your your VCC to pin 20, and then pin 21 is an analog reference voltage. So you connect your analog reference. Say, let's say you want you want your analog reference to be 3.3 volts. So you can connect it to the uh, analog reference, and then we have the ground on pin 22. So from pin 23 to 28, they are um, analog pins, the analog pins. So we have six analog pins and then 14 digital pins on the Atmega 328P microcontroller. So another thing is um, the pin 28 and pin 27, pin 28 is the, the serial clock. Pin seven is the serial data acknowledge. So, or if you want to use uh, some kind of um, communication, there are different uh, types of um, serial communication. We have the high to C, which is the inter-integrated circuit, and then we have the UART, universal asynchronous receive transmit, and then we also have um, the SPI communication, serial peripheral. Um, interface so, so depending on the um, kind of um, application or the kind of uh, device or module I am using so because um, modules have um, different way of communication different way in which they talk to microcontroller so if you want to make use of for example a Bluetooth module so you can make use of the serial connection, which is the UART. So like that. So let's move on to the next thing. Uh, the, uh, okay, there's something I, I I forget to talk about. So the Atmega 328P microcontroller is an 8-bit microcontroller. The microcontroller is an 8-bit microcontroller. That is. Um, the it process information i mean it process data rather in form of 8 bits so it's an 8 bit microcontroller so it cannot handle data that is higher than 8 bits so so that's the way it operates so it, and it makes use of a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator and some of the, um, the specification is also that the ee prom is one kilobyte and then the 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 static RAM that is the static random access memory of the Atmega 328P. It is um, two kilobytes. The what else? The the flash memory that is the the, the program memory that's it has two kilobyte program memory and then and some other some other features so you can double search at mega 328 in order to learn more in order to know the functionality and the features how you can use it in your project so that is what i'm going to say about the at mega 328p so now we have talked about 
the Arduino a lot. I've talked about um, how you can, uh, what Arduino is, um, the, the functionality, what they use it for, and then this and that. So now let's talk about how we can implement all of uh, all of the things we have talked about. So let's talk about how we can implement those things. Now, getting started with Arduino. To get started with Arduino, you need a personal computer. That is, you need a personal computer. You need a system. At least uh, a system of uh, two gig RAM. Um, uh, it is either either 32 bit or 64 bit, and you need to install a Windows or whatever um, kind of operating system you 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 like or you want, and then you need to install the hotels after getting a PC. Uh -huh. After getting a PC, you need the Arduino board and then the USB cable in which you will use to connect. Uh, the board and then you need some other things so the Arduino Uno board breadboard and the USB cable so A to B plug type which is the same kind of cable used for most modern USB printers so all these you can see some of the um, if you have a printer at home let's say you know your cable gets spoiled and then you need another one so you can check your printer so printer cable is always like this a mix of the printer cable and then you connect it up to your system so also you must understand how some basic electronics components work and have basic knowledge of programming that is if you want to get started with Arduino so you have to possess some basic knowledge of how basic electronic components work that is components like resistor a capacitor and a diode, uh, a, an oscillator, a light emitting diode, a rectifying diode, transformer, and some other components. You have to uh, possess basic understanding of those kind of components. So you have to possess the basic understanding of components like that. So and then um, the other things that you need is uh, programming. So you must be able to uh, to write a program. That is, you must know what a variable. When it gets to programming terms, you must know what a variable is, and you must know what a um, what an identifier is, you must know how to write a function, you must know what yes. uh, an assignment statement is, you must know um, the, the variable declaration, that is a global variable and a local variable. So you must know about programming, you must know how to write a program. So you must know what the program is and then you must understand or you must have the basis of uh, of the Arduino C language so that you'll be able to write a program. So, so if you possess those knowledge, great. So we are good to go. And if you do not possess the knowledge, there's no problem. Just follow along as we go on with the lesson. You can get a full Arduino Stata kit in an online marketplace or in nearby electronic shop. So now, you know, I, I talk about the Arduino board, the cable. So there is an Arduino Stata kit. So the Arduino Stata kit, inside the Arduino Stata kit, you will find the Arduino board and then the, uh, the, the, the cable that will use to connect to your system. You find it there. Let me show you the. Arduino starter kit. Let me show you out how it looks.
So this is the Arduino starter kit. So this is how the starter kit looks. So you need to get something like this. So it is a few dollars. So inside the kit you have the Arduino board. You have the Arduino board inside it and then you have some couple of uh, resistor buttons um, you have a potentiometer you have jumper wires there's jumper wires inside it there is a um, RTC a real time clock there is a motor um, there is a seven segment seven segment display so there are a lot of things and there is, an, uh, there is a dot matrix display inside the Arduino starter kit uh, there are some other couple of things like this um, stick this analog stick and then there is an RFID inside the starter kit that is a radio frequency identification so there is a relay an electromechanical switch so there are a lot of things there is a there is a there is a light dependent resistor that is an LDR and there is so there are so there are so many components inside the Arduino packet so getting this will make um, your learning easier so by the time you practicalize all of the components inside the kits so that you'll be able to um, to to make use of Arduino very well so the kit is a few dollars you can check a nearby electronic shop in your um, in your environment on your area or wherever on the internet and go to Amazon go to um, other fruits or, or uh, electronics marketplace so you're gonna see the Arduino starter kit so because you need it is very important it is very very important so after getting those things um, and then you have the knowledge I talk about so the next thing is you download the Arduino integrated development environment that is the IDE the software that will allow you to program will allow you to enter your codes will allow you to enter your set of instructions so the ID, the Arduino ID, in order to download the Arduino ID, so there is a link, so you can make use of this link, the, um, for Windows, you can go to www.arduino.cc slash English slash guide slash Windows. So if you are using Windows, so when you get to that link, you'll see um, step by step description of how you install the Arduino ID and how you set it up. So for Linux, you can do the same thing, make use of the link. And if you are using Mac, so you make use of the link. So the Arduino ID is the software you use to upload your code to the board. So you make use of the Arduino ID to upload your software to the board so that is that about that one and when it gets to electronics you have to be very careful though what you see what we still be using what you what you'll be using majorly is dc but there'll be a time there'll be a situation whereby you need to work with an ac an alternating current and you know it's very dangerous so you have to be very careful so that um you don't you don't make any mistake of touching the live wire so let's move on to the next slide now what will be discussed so in this um, lesson we will talk about some few things I'll talk about some few things in this lesson.
So we'll talk about how to turn on a light bulb for 30 seconds after a button has been pressed. So we're going to play around that. We turn on the light bulb for 30 seconds after a button has been pressed. That is, you write the we will write the Arduino sketch that will do that job and then we'll connect the circuit. That means in order to achieve this project, um, let me tell you the list of components we need. Number one, we need a lamp holder that is going to hold the bulb. We need a bulb, be it 60 watts or 100 watts bulb, or we're making use of a 60 watt bulb. We need a button which is inside the Arduino kit. We need a um, we need jumper wires, and then we need a relay, a relay which is an electromechanical switch, and then we need um, we need some other component, the Arduino board and the cable and so on. So we need a transistor, we need a resistor, so on. So that's and then we play around it. We try some kind of. Uh, we're going to try some kind of way, uh, other other things like, okay, let's make it 20 seconds. After turning it off, we want it to be on automatically, maybe after some few seconds or some other things. So number two, the second thing we're going to discuss is uh, working with a P10 dot matrix display. So how we can program a dot matrix display? How we can write something on the display, and then, if possible, we we'll play around the display maybe with a Bluetooth Android application, which is um, if time permits. So the third thing is um, building your own power alarm. So the building alarm, uh, your own power alarm. I will not be building a power alarm. Well, we will just make use of a, an existing one, the one I've built um, maybe I think two years ago. I'll just use use, his, use the, um, the power alarm as an example. And I'll give you the list of components I used and I'll explain the code, how it works, everything about it. So, so the first thing is um, I'll tell you what you should do next. That is, after this lesson, what you should do. What should you, because some people will say, okay, this lesson, after this lesson, so what should we be doing? Okay, and I'll tell you, okay, the next thing is, okay, do this, do that. So, uh, so let me show you the, the Arduino ID. I'm going to show you how the Arduino ID looks. So this is the Arduino IDE, that is the Integrated Development Environment. This is the look of the Arduino IDE. For example, this is a code, but this is not for our lesson, this is not for our lesson, this is about this one is about 482 lines of code. So, so this is the Arduino ID. This is the interface. So let me open up a. Um, I want to open up. I want to. I want us to use the Arduino board for the first time, just as an introduction. As a description, let's say you saw you connect your board to your, your, your cable. After connecting your cable to your system, then you plug it to your board. So, connect it to your board. I'm doing that. I'm not sure you're seeing that very well. Let me try to. Next. 
So after connecting your Arduino board to your system, uh, if you are if you are um, doing the connection for the first time, there will be a kind of pop up that will tell you to install the driver. Then after installing the driver, so open up the IDE and go to file. I mean, uh, okay, go to file. Go to examples. There are a lot of example codes, code that have been written that you can just use to uh, you can use it in your project, or you can just upload it to your board to see the functionality of the code. So now, for example, exa go to examples, click on basics. You see blink. So click, when you click the blink, it will open up the blinking code. I mean the, uh, the blank sketch. Another window will pop up. So another window of uh, pop up. Let me maximize it. So let me allow you to be able to see. In order to be able to see the window, let me do something. So you should be able to see the new Arduino, uh, the blink code. Now, so let me, for the, uh, if you are connecting your board for the first time, once again, you go to tools, then you go, you go to ports to select your, um, your Arduino board, where it is connected to on the COM port. So my Arduino board is connected to COM8. So it, is, it has been selected automatically because I've used it before. So then you do some couple of settings. So this one board, so the type of board I'm using is Arduino Genuino Uno. So that's why I choose the Arduino Genuino Uno. So if you are making use of Arduino Mega, you choose Arduino Mega. So if it's Arduino Nano, you choose Arduino Nano. So, so the blink code, so this is the blink code, so you see um, slash asterisk, so the slash asterisk um, is used to, uh, to demonstrate, it's used to demarcate, comment, comment in your code, in your comment can, comment will allow, um, will allow another person to know what you are doing in your code. When you put comments in your code, the comments, once the person read the comment, the person will know, okay, what you're doing in your code. So that's the essence of putting comments in your code, or at times, if you want to remember what you do in a particular line, of, in, in a particular line of code, and add comment to it, so that the next time you come there, you see what, what happened there. So I'm not gonna take us through, I'm not gonna do much explanation, I just want us to see, I just want us to upload the blink code to the board and see what is going to happen. So you go to so you go to uh, you click on upload to upload the code to the board. So once you upload the code to the board there is a an LED connected to pin 13 to digital pin 13 of the microcontroller so the LED is on the board it has been mounted on the board or is um, soldered on the board by the manufacturer of this board so the LED will start blinking so the LED is blinking after one second so that will indicate that your Arduino, Arduino um, once you upload code for the first time and then the upload is successful, it's gonna write done uploading. So sketches uses 928 bytes, so 2% of program storage space. So the maximum is 33 and 32256 kilobytes and 32256 bytes. 
which is 32 kilobytes. So we have make use of 2%. The plug we upload to this, uh, to the microcontroller, take 2% of the flash memory, of the program memory. So global variable use 9 bytes. That is, if there is any global variable you declared in your code, so, but we don't use any global variable, so that's why it is 0%. So, and then leaving 2039 bytes for local variables. The maximum is 2048 bytes. So that is the static RAM is 2 kilobytes. But we didn't use anything out of the static RAM. So that's, um, so the LED is blinking. The LED on the board is blinking. So, to be to turn on for one second and then to turn on for one second. So the LED is connected to pin 13 of the microcontroller. So that's the Arduino ID. That's how you connect it to your uh, you connect the port to the system, and that's the way you upload your code. Once you click on upload, the code is going to upload. So if all the connections are correct. So I think that is all for today. Um, to, uh, that is all for today. The next lesson, so we pick up the topic, which is uh, turning on a light bulb for 30 seconds after a button has been pressed. So we do that in the next lesson. Uh, thank you very much for watching the vi this video. I am Joseph Oluwafemi Fale once again. You can, if you want to uh, message me. You can make it up my Gmail, Jofwit, J O F W I T solution at gmail.com. And then, if you want to um, go to my social media page on um, Twitter, J O F W I T underscore solution on Twitter, on um, Instagram, the same thing, my Facebook page, Jofwit solution, J O F W I T space solution search it on facebook you are going to see my facebook page thank you very much for watching this video bye